The following data represent the muzzle velocity in feet per second of rounds fired from a 155 millimeter gun. For the each round, two measurements of the velocity recorded or recorded using two different measuring devices resulting in the following data. It completes parts A through D. Okay, we are not going to use tables here. I don't think we'll need the table. So the first question, I guess, is why is this paired? So think about this before you watch me do it. Okay, the two measures of A and B are taken on the same round. That, that makes sense. So they're taken on the same round. Okay, is there a difference in measurement of the muzzle velocity between devices A and B at the point of one level of significance? And it says that normal probability plot and box plot of data indicate differences are approximately normal, distributed with no outliers. So there were some underlying assumptions here, and often in textbook type problems, we just sort of brush over those. Uh, in reality, you actually have to check these, and we'll talk more about that in the class itself. Okay, so our difference is going to be A minus B. You have to state that, otherwise you don't know what direction you're going. So we're doing A minus B. So again, the null is that they're equal. And if they're equal, that means when I subtract them, the difference is zero. And it just says, is there a difference? So it doesn't have a sense for one way or the, whether one observation is better than the other. So we go with a two-sided test. Again, these numbers are always the same. Determine the test statistics. So now I'm, I need to run the test. So I'm going to open in StatCrunch. And then I pull right in. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time keying data in. So I'm going to go to Stat, T Stat. Now, one thing you could do here, you could go ahead and make another column for the differences and run a t-test just on that one column. We're not going to do that, but you can do that. We're going to go to stat, t-stat, and there's a paired here. And so we'll let column A be 1, and then column B. We could save the differences. We're not going to. And again, notice we were doing mu1 minus mu2 which is exactly the same as we have on our problem, A minus B, where A is 1, B is 2. So make sure all that lines up. Take an extra second to do that. And press Compute. Okay, so here is what we have. Our, so always look at the mean. So the mean was negative 1.5. Doesn't look like a very large mean, considering these are pretty rather large numbers. They're in the 700s, 800s. So not a very big difference at all, it doesn't appear. So our test statistic is negative, and we're going to round to two places, negative 0.55. Okay, to find the critical values for this hypothesis test, we can do it a couple different ways. You can use the table. I'll show you how to do that. So we can click on the table. And again, this is based on our 0.01 level of significance. I notice the table, um, this is just for one tail, so we have two tails. And so we take our 0.01 and divide it by 2. That gives us 0 0.005, because we have half, we've got to split half that area. So we're looking down this column here, and what's degrees of freedom? We have a sample size of 6, so degrees of freedom is 5. DF is always n minus 1. So here's my 5.05, so my critical value is 4.032, and a negative 4.032. Now in StatCrunch, we again put 0.01 divided by 2, degrees of freedom, you got to make sure you change that, I'll sometimes forget to do that, because I'm used to doing the normal, but you got to change DF to 5, and then you get the same thing. 4.032. Our test statistic, negative 0.55, falls like right around in here. So it is not in the red region at all. So we do not reject HO. There is not enough evidence 
To conclude, there's a difference in the measurement of the velocity between these devices. Okay, now let's construct a 99% confidence interval. And we're going to turn the stack crunch, so I'm going to come back over here to the te hypothesis test I already ran. Good options and edit. And we're going to do a confidence interval. And it says 99%, so 0.99. And let's do an A minus B, so make sure you're keeping that. We got mu1 minus mu2, which is A minus B. And here we go. So our lower limit is negative, let's see, 9.60. And the upper limit is 7.30. So interpret the confidence interval. So we are 99% confident the true mean difference in measurement is somewhere between these two numbers. So let's see which one of those says that. And it's this last one. We're 99% confident the mean difference in measurement lies in this interval above. And since zero is in the interval, that's another reason we re um, didn't reject. I mean, the, the difference could have easily been no difference. Okay, now we're going to do a box plot of the differences in the data. So let's come over here to StatCrunch. Edit this. And remember when I had this choice here to save the differences? I'm going to do that. And press Compute. So now I have my differences. I could have gone ahead and just subtracted those. That wouldn't have been super hard. But boy, it's nice when things are done automatic for me. I'm going to go to Graph and Box Plot. Differences. Let's go ahead and just keep them horizontally. It doesn't look like they're doing any outliers. And we'll just go to Compute. Okay, so something like that. So we have here the, um, here's our five number summary there. You look at the median, almost right at zero is the median. Um, goes from about negative eight to a little more than four. Let's see if any of these um, match that. I'll be honest, picking out these graphs is sometimes tedious. In practice, we of course don't do this. You'd actually just generate that graph. So this one's not too bad. So if I look at the, this line here, which represents the median, I think B is the only one that comes close, right? We know it's right around zero, and the other ones don't come close, so B. And we've mentioned this before, but does the visual evidence support a result in part B? Now, I'll be honest, normally you would do all this before you even did <laughs> the uh, hypothesis test, right? You, we always do descriptive statistics and visual displays of data first, to see if we can even run these things. But nonetheless, so yes, it does, because when we mentioned this before, zero is contained in the box plot. So there's zero right there, right in the middle. It's the median. So um, that just confirms that these two, that there is not a difference between A and B. Again, because these are the differences. All right, well, I hope that helps.